This little video is basically a look at the machines we used in Twist of Fate, only in a little bit more detail. So Gary and I, when we were finished filming, just as the rain was coming on, parked all the tractors out in the field beside us here, and we just literally took a walk through trying to explain to you what the, the, the reasoning behind the madness was. So at this stage, a lot of you will have seen our new DVD, Twist of Fate, and if you are wondering why we chose what we chose in it, this little video will explain. Look at it. Look at that for a field of gear for putting in grass, for a farmer putting in it is pure class. 2016 has been an absolutely abysmal year lately with the weather. We tried to bring you the best in the trailed world of harvesting grass for the small farmer to the large farmer to the small contractor. We've used new toys, we've used our second hand toys. Right. And it was a disaster. <laughs> got a letter in complaining that we're always focusing on high horsepower self-propel foragers and we're forgetting about the farmer the farmer or small contractor who's putting their own grass in so we took that letter on board so we gathered ourselves up two trailed harvesters the latest and greatest only one in Ireland Clonskildy 12, 60 now. Clonskildy bought out JF a couple of years ago. I refer to this mostly as a JF, but I do know Clonskildy, when they came in and bought over JF, they started investing a lot more money into the product, and that is the reason we have this machine, the 1260. We've worked with the 1060 before in Two Legends and a Donkey, and then we have also seen the 1350 last year um, when we were out filming, and there's also the 1460, and there was a massive difference between those. So, Clonskildy or JF have went and they have given us an FCT1260 which is like an in between the two. What makes it so special is they've done away with the chains, it's all gearbox driven. It's the same width of drum, same number of knives as you get in the 1060 only it opens 31.7% more of an opening to let more grass through. 2.6 meter pickup reel so you can see swan neck drawbar, so you can see straight away you're getting the full width. The same three wheels in below the pickup, but in this one, they have added the optional extra of the wheels on the outside, which are in front of the tines. Well, they're sort of parallel with the tines, but they're helping to keep her floating better on the ground. Drop, shoot, you can see the two shoots in comparison you can fill in the big square trailers it's very easy to do that there i suppose the price of this harvester would be the one negative thing um we're mm. we're we're talking about um <laughs> 60 plus thousand pounds here um for a trailed harvester however if you had a 200 horsepower tractor I think JF would still, or Clonskildy would still be talking you into the 1060. Yeah. As this harvester does have a serious appetite and requires a lot of power. And then, to my right, <laughs> we have the Pottinger Mech 6. One heck of a brilliant harvester in our day. What do you think, Gary? Six grand. Really? That costs six grand. I know what looks Six up. grand. What? <laughs> the fate. One ten ninety. Yeah, put grass up the shit. No problem. Fairness. Only block ones. Yeah. Pottinger Max Six. This is a. I don't mean this in any bad word, but it's a ancient harvester now. It's an old school type harvester. It's a simple flywheel harvester. Pick up, auger, feed rollers, flywheel blades up through the shoot. You don't get much simpler. Um, it's, you know. I'd say the ideal horsepower there is about 150 horsepower would be, in my opinion, what it would be. This is a second hand one that was in a local dealer. And if you need it to lift grass, it's been fully serviced. Six and a half thousand pounds value. 
to buy this if I if I wanted to buy this and take this six and a half thousand pounds and for a farmer putting in his own grass we just wanted to see can we take an old second hand harvester flywheel harvester and make it happen let's go around her quickly so simply your drive comes up in so it, the grass comes in through this is the old old school here all right help me up son go for it it's hurt that's it grass comes in <laughs> cut down through the knife paddle blows it up through the chute driven by So that's your main power band drive belt coming down from your drive off the PTO at the tractor down through your power band driving this connecting all on and that's, that's that's it in a nutshell that's as simple as you're going to get I picked the harvesters I said to you guys sort them on talk me through where have we got a crone? got a crone because she's supposed to be the Irish moor did a crone man tell you that? he did I Okay. Apparently she's been developed for Irish conditions, very strong moor. She's a grouper model. Uh I suppose that's a big Irish I suppose it's a big thing still in Ireland like uh It is I. Uh she's the three two oh one C V. C V is your conditioner V tine. Because she's the grouper model, she actually has a solid V tine in her. I think it sets out like that. Yeah. Creates blue. Yeah. Basically, if you put it on your gripper belt. What on, kind of money is this bad boy? With the gripper, 22. <sighs> Aye. That's the only. For a more? Yeah. For a 10 foot 6 more. How did she pull? How did the fate do on her? How did you find any of that? Thought she was an awesome more. Fairly. I think the fate knew it was there. I think she was. Should be a hard drive, um, but seems of. I think the fate was just a wee bit light of a tractor for her. To be honest, she's. You would need a heavier tractor in the front, or she would right. bully her a wee bit. Look yeah. at the frame, which is a double framework on her. She's pulling from the front frame, so at your bed is always gliding. Your gl your bed always wants to travel back, and she has a feature on her there. Whenever you go to lift, seen that. That angles your angles your bed back to stop just to you can ease it up off the ground that wee bit which is i thought was great but very very nice mower very very strong they've your gripper mounted in the back frame because they have suspension and all developed onto it now you can see the sphere on it there for your suspension everything's you know they, they've done 40 changes on her since the 3200 to 40? 40 changes, aye. Uh, yeah. Boys and tears. Well, this is your yeah. new moor, so this is what you picked to represent 10 foot moor. This is meant to be the daddy of. Okay, okay, so this is. This, trail moor. This is the benchmark. Yep. She's, without your gripper, she's around 16. So, your second hand moor choice guy, what, what did you go for? Cavernland. Or, as they've been better known, Tarrup. You know, 4032. Another, she's 3.2 metres, same width cut as the crone. Gyro head, you know, basic mower, no gripper. She's spread plates on her. V tine as well, it's, it's not as not as heavy duty as that mower by no means, but she's good, good mower, going well, cut and clean, you know. Were there any issues with any of the mowers when they were working? Ah, we had a slight issue with the last one. So the, the new one new didn't one look back? New one never looked back. Done her job. And this one gave us this a bit of a breakdown. Was there downtime with this one? There was, aye. There was downtime. To be fair, she's she's an old, you know, she's an eight-year-old more. Like, I suppose she come to expect it, really. Like, she's £6,000. You take your chance, you know. Like, that's... Six grand. So the harvester was six grand, and this was six grand. This is six grand, yep. Right. Trailers. Right, when it came to trailers, I get my thinking cap on and, and you know, we have done lots of work with um, Heron and Kane and, and that before and, and, and we decided, you know, not not everyone wants to be invest in that level of money into a trailer. And uh, what else is out there that a farmer may own to do his own job and things like that there. So we looked at a couple of second-hand trailers and then we also looked at a brand spanking new trailer. Um, 
The brand new trailer we, that we opted to go for this one was, was very well known here as the Donnelly trailer. It's, um, we're talking a nine grand trailer, 10 stud axle, good brakes, 560 low wide ground pressure tires on her. And yes, 10 sides wouldn't have the same strength that you'd have in yeah. some of the other trailers, but for grass, it's perfect. And one of the good things about her is, Gary, what can we do here? Make her any a flatbed. We can turn this trailer, take the sides off, and then we have a flatbed trailer to go to the field. What about the second hand trailers you got, Gary? <laughs> I got? Yeah. <laughs> Aye, well, we have a Fraser, if everybody remembers the Frasers. This is showing your age now uh, in a Fraser trailer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, then well, we. Well, I mean, when they were a big trailer. Was a big trailer. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, the old logging mechanism at the back, the wire ropes up the side, tip up so far, and then the wire ropes, and they used to get caught on all the gate posts, and oh. you used to be constantly fixing them. Whereas the Donnelly is the same idea as your cane trailer and your heron trailer. It's uh, in below. Out of the way. Out of the way as it tips up, but releases itself. No frills, good trailer, very easy to pull, very easy in the ground. And for a big farmer in wet land or whatever, and he wants something, that's the ideal. And then we also have second hand an eight year old heron trailer now whilst the trailer may be starting to show its age i can assure you that trailer has been used literally as a dump trailer as well as a sideways trailer it uh, has done a lot of heavy work on that side and in below that trailer you can see where the quality is there and the money is there uh, in the trailer because the chassis of that trailer is still strong yeah. showing yeah. absolutely zero signs of wear you know you could set a new body onto that you know, chassis that, like that 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 is phenomenal. You're looking brand new at the Donnelly. What guy about nine grandish? Nine grandish, aye. Yeah. Your Fraser. Yeah. I don't know what. Was Free to good home kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> what does she weigh? <laughs> T met was what price is still nowadays. A couple of grand. I would say at the most. Yeah. And then your hair and trailer still be up into about six grand I reckon. Still holding its value. In and around that there. Um, for buck rake and we just chose at the last minute we put the new red rock buck rake on the 7, 8, 10. Most shovels would struggle to do what that thing does and that's... What would I you would change? Probably the front linkage just doesn't up to... It's not the best front linkage in that tractor to be fair. You would want maybe a bit of a heavier duty one on her. Um, if you were doing it all the time, but like if you're only doing your own grass every year, that would be grand. But it's the sort of buck rake. It's not too big. It's not too heavy. You could use it on your smaller tractor. The more I thought about it yesterday, it's not a high value item, really. No. Is there any point in buying your full baller? Oh, that you'd I you go for the new? Yeah. It's like everyone else. We decided <laughs> to do this here when it rains, but when the sun was shining, we were working. Uh, look, as everybody knows, we're really excited about this tractor here. And this tractor is sitting here parked with its nose out in the front, the centerpiece. Um, because, it's the, obviously, it's the Fiat 11090 that, that we are giving away. And by the time you've watched this, we will have given away to the Mega Wish Foundation. Should be with our new home. And we made, we made the decision um, that we wanted to, to do something in this DVD that showcased this tractor, to show that this tractor had what it takes to do the modern job and that's what led us down the route ultimately of going to the trailed harvester and the moors and going back down that route. So this little baby here inspired this project and we decided what tractors did we need and we decided it was time to go into our own grass men fleet and we pulled out um, a couple of our own tractors with the 1455 case which case are now owned by New Holland anyway and then of course last but by no means least in the corner we pulled out baby donkey. Um, she's it's eventually doing something. Eventually the first bit of real work that tractor's done since we've got, she's broke her heart I have to admit. That's one of the things, but that's a, that was her second hand choice, um, was to go down this route here. So um, supporting the 11090 was her 1455 under 3650. We, we put the 1455 onto the big heavier heron trailer because the big trailer like that needs a little bit of grunt, a little bit of power behind it. Bit of and it too. We had the 3650 onto the Fraser, the two greens and all the rest of it kind of matched. And that's pretty much what we've done there. Now, that was our second hand tractor choice. Gary was in charge of the new tractor choice. And I'm just going to lean back at this point and look away in disgust. 
I never tried when he told me this is what I was driving in the 1260 JF. Gary, why did you do this to me? Well, we were doing it. Armstrong machinery, getting the turbo fitted in the Fiat. And I remembered her being there, their demonstrator, and Charles Kindly Lantler gave us the tractor for the job. So, And we hadn't done much with New Holland's in fairness. So why not? I well, knew, I knew you hate them, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, at the end of the day, I agreed with it, I suppose, from the point of view of it's a New Holland 11090, and not a lot of people maybe understand the history of New Holland, Ford, and uh, Fiat, but it is, it's, uh, it's New Holland is the 11090, and now we're into the new version of New Holland, so I thought it would be nice, it would be nice to see the two different generations of New Holland working together and we did we give in and, and we brought her up and she's a, she's the auto command version and constantly I, variable son constantly variable That's transmission and I always complain about that that I like gears and stuff so it was forcing me to get used to that forcing me to get used to complete the new harvester but and at the start I really struggled it's a big change for you it was just totally <laughs> culture shock. And utterly out of my comfort uh, zone but yeah. I have to say one thing, and I'll say this now, and I'll say this with a straight face. Every acre that I was putting through with this tractor, I was enjoying it more and more and more. I started to get onto the Vario. I started to like some of the aspects. Some aspects of the Vario, or the, some aspects of the gearbox, I would be a little bit weary of still. But? No, I loved her. Aye. Uh, that is a nice tractor. You have to admit. <laughs> I thought it was lovely finished. Yeah. I thought it was... Um, the, the JF certainly could handle more power. Caverns where it needs to be. Not putting that down to the tractor. I mean, that JF could swallow another 100 horsepower. No okay, problem. yeah, yeah. But, like, we... This... Like, this is in the realms of a big har or a big farmer. Yes. That's not a, you know... Exactly. A big farmer could literally have this. And then, just to the other side of this, the cameras is... Uh, Four cylinder the turbo, T6 yeah. auto command as well, 160 horsepower. So again, it was a nice one. We put it on the new Donnelly trailer uh, a little bit as well, just to demonstrate that it could handle that. But yeah, this, I mean, this, this tractor here is kitted out. It's the absolute latest and greatest. It's even got the wee sporty LED run daytime lights on her. It's wee things like that float my boat. She's on the Michelin Mac bibs. I mean, I'm a man that couldn't ask for anything else. She has uh, blue, obviously. She she does what it says in the tin. She's very comfortable. Seat and position is very good. Um, good, heavy, strong tractor for her job. Yeah. Now, if you come with me, we'll have one final tractor. <laughs> right? Look her. It's not often we agree on anything. Look her. <laughs> it is not often we agree on anything. <laughs> Aye. Now, this is going to be a shock. People that knows you, aren't it? Huh? <laughs> this ha is one of my favourite tractors of all time. It's a Massey. That is my favourite. It is your uh, favourite. Well, I, yeah. I'm sorry. My favourite still the 7, 8, 10. But this 3000 series Massey for me as as good as it gets and that goes back to when I was five years after I was born I was born in 1981 five years after I was born Massey launched the 3000 series Massey so what I'm getting at with this here is I was only five years old and the technology that's in that tractor uh, the electronics yeah. was there but I believe this was the best Massey ever made Yes, it had its problems because it was so advanced in its time. The concept of it was the, the yeah. The, the concept of this tractor was awesome. And well, the reason we have this tractor here is very important. Um, when it comes to putting your own grass in, way back in the day, uh, farmers would have borrowed machines from each other. Someone would have come in with another tractor, lent That's the right. tractor, done a bit of a job there, and then you would have returned the favour, you would have went with your tractor. Farmers came together. That's right. And that's typically yep. the way farming is here in Ireland and, and, and probably the UK as well, but particularly here within Ireland, Northern Ireland, South of Ireland, we came together at harvest time. One person helped the other person that's right. and that's how it went. So we wanted to, we get a lend of this tractor to demonstrate that exact favour and 
we landed this from a large arable farmer, uh, Michael Hoy, of all people, Country Crest, and we have to return the favour by going. Now, uh, as soon as this rain goes by again, we have to help him in with his grain. Gary, you drove this tractor the most. Talk to me. Oh. This is your that is all, isn't it? Ah, oh, unreal. I just, I just think they're gone like them, to be honest. Uh, especially the last of them there, that everyone's pretty well sorted on them. Dana shift. Dana shift 32 box. forward gears. Yep. And, and you have to drive her, you have to feed her through the yep. gears, you have to She's work She's a driver's with her. tractor. She Very really much is. so a driver's tractor. She really is. So, and everything's, again, your hydraulics is nice where you yep. need them. I, I could go through like compared, most of those tractors and pick faults. Yeah, compared to that, I love that 1455, but I wouldn't put that, I wouldn't put them in the same league for drivability. Everyone's awkward in that tractor, whereas that, you know, it would be good at any job. But she's well ahead of her time. I mean, that, that, that tractor there, yeah. I mean, your, your Fiat 11090 is 1998. Uh -huh. That series came out in 1986. Yeah. That came out 12 years right. previous to that. And those two tractors are in a different league. Not taken away from the lovability of the Fiat aye, 11090. Not, aye, exactly. Even or, your John Deere 3650s in 1993, I yeah, think she yeah. is. These two tractors are in a different league. As much as I love the John Deere, I mean, I would personally take this tractor ahead of the 3650. Yeah. It's a more usable tractor. You said you'd never buy a Massey. <laughs> That's why I got a land of it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to reignite that old flame. And it kind of is. Michael mightn't get her back. No, no. And Kirsty as well. I think this is the one tractor um, that we've had on our premises, Aye. under our control, that all the, the main drivers absolutely adore and yeah. love, so there, there's no doubt about that. I mean, yeah. Kirsty didn't, you know, no disrespect to the wee T6160. We asked Kirsty to put it in the Donnelly. I asked her last night just to draw a few loads because I, I thought it would look nice with it beside the, the two new Hans. I mean, nah, I mean, at the end of the day, we were, we were trying to create a nice picture and she drew one load with it and she asked me, could she put the Massey back on? And that, to me, said it all. I know, I know. The old gear is fine and it does its job. But the one bit of advice I give to anyone before they go out and try to get a harvester at six grand and a more at six grand and trailers at a couple of grand, be prepared to mechanic. Yeah. If you want peace of mind and you've got the checkbook to do it. New every time. If you can do yeah. it. The new machine comes with warranty. But having said that, and this is where I can flip it, the combined cost of all the second hand gear added together, wouldn't even buy the T7245. That's aye. Uh, and on that bombshell. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>